All right, I wanted to make a video introducing uh, periodic functions, sine and cosine curves. And I want to do it through the lens of thinking about a Ferris wheel. So let's look at a problem. And this problem um, I actually borrowed from Phillips Exeter Academy. They're math three. So um, I don't want to focus on the problem itself. I just want to focus on mainly the idea of the Ferris wheel. So we have Jamie rides a Ferris wheel for five minutes. And the diameter of the wheel is 10 meters. The center is eight meters above the ground. And each revolution of the wheel takes 30 seconds. So I just want to think about how this wheel's turning. And you know, they're talking more about, in the problem, about um, being able to see the ocean if he's a certain height or up above the ground. Um, again, I just want to use this idea uh, to set up a model here. So let's take a picture of a Ferris wheel in here. And I know this isn't the same Ferris wheel and probably doesn't resemble it in terms of its, of its uh, scale. But here's our Ferris wheel. Now think about what's happening here. Is Jamie is going to enter, let's use red here. Jamie's gonna enter the Ferris wheel here at the bottom. Um, the diameter of this wheel is 10 meters. So all the way across here is 10 meters, which means that the radius here is five meters. And um, the diameter, let's see, the center is six meters above the ground. So this distance from here to the actual ground, it's an extra meter to get to the ground. So that's six meters to the ground. So let's think about this in terms of just the movement. Um, if we have a little coordinate axis here, and this is the height that Jamie is above the ground, and this is the time that Jamie is on this Ferris wheel. So the lowest height that Jamie would be above the ground right here, and probably use some stairs to get up there, is one meter because the ground here, in this case, picture the ocean or some water, is uh, at level zero, and Jamie's gonna get on at height one. So we have here is height, here's height one. Okay. And the ride's gonna start, and at some point, Jimmy's gonna get to a max. Now the question is, what's that max? Well, this height is one above the ground. So this height right here is one. And then this is an additional 10. So up here would be 11. So this is the highest that Jamie gets, is 11 above the ground. So I'm gonna use the dotted line here. at 11. And then Jamie's gonna ride this for about five minutes, or for five minutes. Um, he's gonna go up, then he's gonna come down, he's gonna go up, and he's gonna go down. And I didn't give enough space here to do all his revolutions because if one revolution takes 30 seconds and he's on there for five minutes, that means it would take him 10 revolutions, right? Because he's going two revolutions per minute for five minutes. So I'm going to stop at two revolutions here. Okay, and that gives you an idea. We could figure out um, how much time it takes. In fact, we know that this would be uh, 30 seconds. That's one minute. Okay. So we get this picture. Um, a few things I want to talk about is the type of curve that this could be. 
Um, this actually is a good example of a cosine um, or a sine curve. We can actually, I should say that, we could use cosine or sine curve to model uh, the height that Jamie is above the ground. Now, um, the difference here with this cosine and sine curve is that um, cosine and sine curves, they start in different places. So let's look at those quickly. Okay, so just the general function of cosine x, right down here, looks something like this, where a starts at the top, comes down, comes back up again. That's cos. That's just a sketch of cosine x. Okay, if I were to sketch this on an axis. It would actually be something like this, where the height starts at 1, and it goes down to negative 1. Okay, and also, the length it takes, which is called the period, the length it takes to finish one, we'll call it revolution, is 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians. And there's a lot of ways that we can prove this, um, but that's not what this video is about. I just want to kind of try to connect this idea of Ferris wheel to um, cosine and sine curves. Okay. Now let's look at with a sine curve, sine x, just the function sine x. The function sine x starts actually in the middle. Oops, that was kind of messy. Goes up, goes down, comes back up again. That's what our sine curve looks like. If I were to draw the coordinate axis for this, it'd be something like that. The highest it reaches, so it starts at zero. The highest it reaches is one. The lowest it goes is negative one. And once again, it has a period of 360 degrees or two pi radian. Okay, so a few um, little ideas here. First, we have what's called the midline of a periodic function, and the midline just kind of goes through the middle. Both of these here, both the cosine and the sine x, the midline is actually the x-axis. If I drew, drew the midline here, we get another dotted line on the function we did above, it would be right in the middle of the bottom, the minimum, and the maximum. So halfway between 1 and 11 would be 5 in either direction, right? So that would be actually at 6. So notice how we're 5 down to the 1 and 5 up to the 11. So there's our midline. Okay. This distance here, that distance there is called the amplitude. Oops, amplitude. In this case, that amplitude equals five. Okay, um, on these, the cosine and the sine, the amplitude is from the midline to the height or the midline to the bottom, the midline of the to the max is one. So both of these amplitudes are one. Okay. Okay, the next uh, terminology I would like you to know here is what's called the period. Okay, now the period is how long it takes for one red one revolution. Okay, so the period here equals 30 seconds. Okay, the period here, the period on both of these, sine and cosine, it's 360 degrees or 2 pi radian. Okay, and the last thing, the last word I want to use here is called the frequency. Now, frequency is how many periods occur within 
the 360 degree domain. So basically, how many times, how many revolutions occur within 360? So this one, that frequency equals one because one of those occurs within the 360. One of these occurs within the free, the 360. Now, if we're talking about seconds, okay, which looks like what they're talking about here, the question is, how many revolutions would occur here within 360 seconds? So if I took 360 divided by 30 seconds, I would get 12. So the frequency here is 12. 12 uh, of these revolutions would occur within 360 seconds. Okay, the last thing I want to do is kind of reach here and give you an idea of how you would use, how you would actually come up with the equation of this Ferris wheel function that we drew here in terms of either sine x or cosine x. Um, you can actually do a function for both sine x and cosine x. It just depends where you start on your drawing. Um, the easiest way to do it is to think about it in terms of kind of which one of these um, functions does this look like the most. So for example here, I would say that this actually, this Ferris wheel function, looks more closely like the cosine, it's just upside down. Okay, so I'm actually going to erase this sign here. Okay, and here's where I'm going to give you kind of the general formula here for a cosine function. So let's use blue here. So I'm going to say y equals and there's going to be a cosine. Let's put it a little bit further down here because cosine here. Okay, so this is a cosine function. We're going to do a little bit of transformation to get from this idea to here. First thing is it's upside down. In previous classes, you should have learned at some point that a graph, to flip it upside down, you can make it the opposite or negative. So I'm going to put a negative cosine here. Okay, now the number that multiplies by the cosine is your amplitude. So I'm going to take this amplitude of 5 and put it right here. So, right there. Okay, um, and I'm going to make a little note. This is the amplitude. Okay, inside the parentheses here is going to be an x, but we're going to have, make it simple here, and the number multiplied by the x is your frequency. So in this case, it's going to be 12. And that is your frequency. Okay, um, and then finally here, the Typical graph started with the midline at zero. This is a midline at six, which means it shifted up six. So I would put a plus six to shift it up six. And I'm going to call this a vertical shift. I'll put a little midline in parentheses. Okay, now if you look at how these, and, that, and that's, that's actually the answer there, I'll go ahead and highlight that. That is your answer. Now, if you look at how these pertain to, to regular cosine x, regular cosine x isn't negative, it starts at the top, it starts positive, uh, the amplitude is 1. That's why there's no number in front of the cosine, it's just a 1 out here. 
the frequency is how many times it occurs within a 360. Well, this has one revolution, so there's actually a one right here. And the vertical shift is zero, because it starts, the midline starts at zero. So that's your plus zero right there. So that's your idea of um, using a Ferris wheel to get the idea of how to use sine and cosine functions.